We have a really big surprise today. It's not just the two of us here, but there's someone else sharing the room with us, isn't there? Isn't Selena there? Thomas. <laughs> Who? We are actually in the same building, and that's how we met. Oh. So it was a serendipitous meeting, I think, in the copy room. Should we bring her in? <laughs> yes. Oh, there she is. All right. <laughs> go, go ahead. So, yeah, welcome in. Nice to see you guys. Thanks for joining us. So many, me. so many good topics here. You know, we're talking omni-channel. We're talking the halo effect of personal branding. Selena Thomas is actually running for city council here in Santa Clarita. Vote, vote, vote. November 8th, get out there. First, I think we should uh, get into the origin story. Selena, take us through this. Yeah. Dr. Eugene Thomas, yeah. your father. Legend really started it all in terms of just my mindset and my ability to kind of navigate through life And I share his story not just because it's so meaningful to me It keeps him alive in so many ways It allows my girls to really understand the why right and their why as well That's what legacy is and and then to make it their own and I think from that my father was able to Continue to be with us and I share because he evolved so many times and if you see my story I've evolved so many times and people are always curious curious about why I'm fearless about that and why it seems easy it's not you know yeah. but it does give me a foundation to be able to pull forward and really accomplish everything I've set out to do I've truly accomplished and I'm grateful for that but it is because I had that foundation well the cycle that I continue to hear from you is this idea of conflict reinvention mm -hmm applying to purpose and then making a success plan and I, I keep hearing that from you take us through that yeah and that's I think good advice for anyone in life I had a real tangible example and so when I first came to Santa Clarita 12 years ago I was coming as a single mom recently divorced had to find a landing spot for me and my three at that time young smaller daughters and now they're all taller and driving and headed into college and so I had to figure out how to do that in a way that kept them not only physically safe but psychologically safe and really cultivated what their skills were ultimately going to be and so I learned early from my father in terms of my self-awareness that I was of greatness and then he taught me that you're going to be a vessel for greatness one day and that's who I brought to Santa Clarita I brought three great girls and I had to have a place that I could cultivate that greatness from schools you know athletics and just being in a, in a sound community that allowed me to be that and really allowed me to prosper, not just personally and professionally, but as a mom. And I'm grateful, and that's what I enjoy representing every day in my candidacy, but in my business. And it must also be about connection, too, and relationships. Yes. I mean, now that you're entering the political foray, mm -hmm. its relationships are now stronger than ever. They're going to have to be stronger Essential. than ever. Yeah. Not just the new ones I'm building, but being able to use the ones that I've built to speak to who I am. And so when you talk about candidate endorsements and people that can speak to someone, I really find great value as a candidate and a businesswoman in people that can say, I've had experience with her. I've gotten this from her. She's given this. This is her character. And those are the really meaningful endorsements that, and these are people that are staple businesses in our community. La Cocina Restaurant, Albright Painting, Rolling Heating and Air. Everyone can immediately, if you're from San Clarita, resonate with those testimonials. So I'm so grateful. Well, it seems like one of the things that you've learned from your father, Dr. Thomas, is this idea to connect with people, finding common ground, and how important that is when you think about personal branding, when you think about running for office, when Excellent. you think about just making friends. You know, take us through that as a mother, as a business owner, yeah. as a city council candidate. How are you finding common ground with people out there? And then, of course, using yeah. social media and video to do so. Yeah, and so. I learned, again, back to Dr. Thomas, how to connect with people right away. Because of what he did for a living, from Air Force to being a teacher to superintendent, he had to make instant connections to resolve problems or help people. And so for me, I embody a lot of things. And I can relate to someone more than likely because of the things that I embody from being a mother, being a business owner, being biracial, having experience in things that you know aren't the fun side of life, you know, divorce and parenting. Some of those things can be heavy and when you connect with people, you connect on that level, the human level. Yeah. The first word in HR is, is human. And so I'm really proud of being able to uh, use that in all the different arenas that I'm in, whether it's working with my kids, working with the community and business and being a candidate. Talk about the conflict experience and how that's yeah. helped and made you grow and using that in your everyday uh, you know, interactions that you have. Yeah, so the conflict experience really is an evolution of your experiences to serve you in the right way. I think I use this term all the time and sometimes when you lose, you win, right? If certain things hadn't happened in life, I wouldn't have done this. So 
Had I not gotten a divorce, I wouldn't have been in Santa Clarita, right? And so that was a big win, not just for me as a person and my daughters, obviously, because of what they've evolved into. But really, had that not happened, I wouldn't have realized the strength that I had and how I could use that to serve me versus feel encumbered by it. I value those things and I share them for that reason because that we can have those and people can not use them in the right way and become bitter. Instead, I came, became better. One of the ideas that I always think about is the busier you are, are, the more time you have, which is a total paradox. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't make any sense. Total, yes. And total. we're into paradoxes right now. Right? We love paradoxes. We love yes. paradoxes. The more oxymoron that is, the more we like yes. it. Yeah. So you have three daughters, yeah. elite athletes, yeah. honor scholars. You can just say geniuses. Geniuses. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. Business owner, running for city council, a friend, so many things. Mm-hmm. How do you find the time? to manage all of this. It's so funny. And I'm on a few boards here in town, nonprofit okay. boards, Bush Education Foundation, uh, the Santa Cruz International Film Festival recently became a board member there. All these things are passions for me. People are passion for me. And so it doesn't feel like work. I think if you are engaged in things that feed your soul, you find the time. Mm. And I'm really honest about this. I take naps. I take naps so that I can really replenish physically. And so I, I have no problem saying that at this age and stage that I will take a nap. <laughs> nice. And so it's finding the balance. But you never wake up past 6.30, nor does anyone in your household. Typically, no. I mean, it's summertime now. And people get a little grace. But I think you have this now body clock that wakes you up. Yeah. And so I'll hear people moving around, uh, not necessarily having to be anywhere in, from practice to school. But it is nice to have a little bit of a break for them. Yeah. For me, I'm my mind is always working. And so I'm up, whether it's an email, you know, we've learned to work remotely, so we work in creative ways. And so I'm always working. Now, speaking of always working, you've effectively gone omni. You're on every channel possible. In my research, which I have in my browser here, you know, I was on your Instagram, your LinkedIn, your The Signal, you have billboards, Santa Clarita Magazine, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, basically any channel that there is, you are there. And amazingly, you are running your social all by yourself. I am. And I think part of why I do that is because I get to control the narrative in a way that is authentic to me, signature to me. I think in branding, everyone understands that signature is so essential. And then also, you know, I want people to see my work that they can see my ability to essentially sometimes be a one-man band. It gives them some insight to what I'm capable of and what I'm willing to do to get the job done. And right now as a candidate, you're interviewing for the job in your campaign. And I'm interviewing and showing people what I'm capable of, what I'm willing to do in a real way, tangible way, to represent them. I've built a business. I'm a homeowner. I'm a stakeholder. I've raised all of my daughters here. I'm able to reflect what's possible. And I think anyone that lives here can appreciate that, given the changes that are happening in our world, not just in our community, the microcosm and then, you know. And so we, it's really important that you understand that at that level, at the city council level, the things that affect you the quickest happen in that council. Mm. And also too, you know, the narrative, you know, that you talk about, you know, especially in politics, you want to be able to control slash write slash craft your own narrative because your background in particular is so diverse and you've done so many different things. Talk to us about how the local community really can lean into so many different parts of you. Mm -hmm. I think because they can relate to me, they can lean in. I can connect with a veteran because I'm a veteran's daughter. I can connect with student athletes' parents because I've run that same path. I can connect especially and specifically to small business owners. They are really the lifeblood of our community. And so leaning into things that I can relate to allow for that authenticity and sincerity to come forward. And what people can glean from that is just really stay authentic to who you are. Mm -hmm. Your brand, your signature can just emerge from your story. And, And because I share my story, people connect to it. It doesn't have to be their story, but the fact that I'm vulnerable enough to share it, vulnerable enough to be transparent about it, it allows people to have trust in me and can rely on me in a way that any representative for your community should have. Now, when I think about the halo effect, I think there's some really tremendous things that happen here. The first being, of course, that a halo is on top of an angel. So (laughs) here you are as an angel to our community, which is a lot of pressure. Yeah, 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 pressure. pressure. Right, right. But what's so interesting is that what creates a halo? Is it our actions? Is it the messaging that we put out there? Is it the way that we project our energy upon other people and the way that it reflects back on us? There's so many things. You know, it's almost like this Venn diagram where these things, a mother, a business owner, a candidate, a friend, a community leader, 
All those things, effectively, what are they doing? They're creating a larger halo. And, and they're all intersecting, too. They're all intersecting. Sure. And when people actually come and finally meet with you, there is this effect. They feel like they've been pre-framed. They've seen your content. They've read about you. So they've seen your billboard. Mm -hmm. I saw your billboard. <laughs> <laughs> it's so important because people have said to me that have seen the billboard that it looks like you. It's yeah, not a it kind of like caricature of you. Correct. And, and that's why I can be recognized in the gas station. Like, hey, are you? And so that tells me that it's working. And yeah. we were so thoughtful in that campaign. Yeah. I work with Slick Art, Brian and Lindsay Slick. They're amazing. They've done my campaign from last cycle to now and my professional. And so when you find people that can assist in that continuity, it's so important. And it's a trusted relationship. So for me, I relinquish very little about the brand because I'm managing it myself. And then there isn't this big differentiation when you meet me in person. You're like, oh, you're just like the, like, you know, I share my bloopers because it speaks of like, I'm not perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I had clients go, can you send the bloopers? Uh, that, that made my day. And so <laughs> I love that because then they can see that, I, you know, I don't profess <coughs> to be perfect nice. either. Well, what's so amazing about this is that you know our audience we cater to to business owners to sales leaders to CEOs CMOs basically the C-suite and so much of personal branding is about how can we create a message that gets out to people that affects some sort of a feeling and that ultimately wants them to gravitate towards us, mm. to buy from us, to nominate us, to you. work with vote us, to you. vote for you, <laughs> like we are going to right. on November 8th. Yes, November 8th, <laughs> don't forget. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, the thing that I think about here is, you know, how you've effectively used the halo, used personal branding to convert yourself from a person that is a business owner that needs a sales effort and an mm -hmm. outbound outreach effort to mm -hmm. now a person that has people gravitate towards them. Inbound, Call no referrals. Call to action, <laughs> right. Yeah, all you know, of it. all of your business now predominantly is coming from referrals. True. And that is all because of the platform that you created. And that's interesting that you said that because today is the first day I found out the definition of Halo Effect. I didn't know what I was doing until you really defined it for me. I just knew I needed to do it. Mm. I knew that the getting 26% of the vote after running for 113 days, that something about that content was working. So mm. don't change that. Mm -hmm. Keep doing it. But also, like, how do I add more touch points? Like, I knew I needed to do a billboard campaign because no one knew me. I knew I needed to continue to, to engage in different arenas to connect with different people because some people do paper, some people sure. do social media. Everyone drives by, you know, so <laughs> it, yeah. it, it, we're getting yeah. back out so we know that people are going to drive by. And I knew I needed it to be up there for a specific amount of time for because I think you mentioned to me, like, you got to see it six times before someone remembers it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, then it's, it's got to stay up six months, yeah. you know. Yeah. In my brain, I was like calculating in that way. So that was important. And then it just became really habitual for me in a positive way, right? They have those habits that aren't good and then there's the ones that are. That one seems to work for me. Well, repetition, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. content. You know, we talk about content all the time. We love our content creators. Everyone, we all have to be content creators these yes. days to get our messaging out there. Mm -hmm. But for you, talk about your kind of special relationship you have with the Signal in particular. Yes, I'm so grateful to them. In so many ways, I, I had an opportunity right after the last cycle for Richard to give Richard Busman, our amazing publisher for the Signal, gave me a platform, Selena Thomas, STV's HR guru. He really wanted me to advantage myself in visibility, and he knew that his publication and even his digital publication was going to have a bigger reach than what I had been able to accomplish in just my advertising, but also that he was wise enough to tell me like, hey, you need more time, and if you give it more time, you'll have an opportunity to really connect to people, and so that's became a real special place for me because if I say, hey, I've got an op-ed subject that I'd really like to get out for people, he's more than happy to publish it, and he wants to see people engaged, and, and it's not just specific to me. This is somebody who wants engagement from our community, knowing that his platform will connect to people and so and my daughter was the producer of my show my 16 year old daughter was the producer so and awesome. so it's very meaningful to me that the opportunity he's given me and of course just had a huge I don't know if we have the paper but you know huge article this weekend of, of me and the girls and my candidacy yeah. so I'm super oh excited. yeah yeah so this is an article just this past Sunday and and my campaign advertising on the bottom but an article about my city council run and you know it's clear that I often I'll, 
will refer to my girls and our journey and our story is together and so this campaign really involves them in so many ways they grew up here they could speak to watching their mom start their company in a Starbucks I started my company Starbucks on Copper Hill in Seiko and five days before the pandemic I was doing a pre-audition for Shark Tank so even without the city council run my journey here has been a blessing it's been amazing and being able to show people what's possible here especially if you could consider coming here as a single mom disadvantaged, I really wasn't because I had so many things that I could use to help shape them from the grade schools to building a business here. I mean, I'm a homeowner because of Six Degrees. And when I remember the day that we closed, I think I shared the story with you, the escrow officer was like, you know, I could literally follow your file for like 47 days. I was so impressed to be able to see a single individual person as a self-employed person buy a home here, especially in that climate. Two years ago, was people were buying homes here cash over and above. I don't where do they get these bags of cash, but they're coming and they're buying these houses. <laughs> and you know, I'm competing with that as, you know, somebody that needs to get a loan. And so I was able to accomplish that and it was really full circle for me to be able to have this escrow officer tell me this and longtime resident, she shared, she's like, I've been here twenty five years. I very rarely see a file like this and I'm really impressed I'm on to shake your hand and of course I was like Here's my campaign card. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Don't shake my hand. Vote on November yeah. 8th. And so, you yeah. know, it was really nice to be able to, and I asked her to repeat that for the girls, because, you know, it's it's not easy, and, and I've dug in really on being able to show them every step so that the journey's not going to be the same, but it's possible. And that's really why I think people have connected of, of, on mm. that. And you've also showed them one of our favorite words, which is differentiating. You yeah. know, you really have. Like, you're such an example to your daughters about how to do something like that and really stand out. Yeah, and then there's some things that you can't teach. And, you know, one is 6'3", one is 6'1", one, one's 5'11". You know, <laughs> we're differentiated just simply because of just some of the optics, too. And, and that has that served us in a way to be able to uh, amplify our culture and that we are different. And, you know, I'm Filipino and African-American. People just found that out today. And be able to understand that all those things are meaningful for us. All those things are what we use to get through life and, and, and consider ourselves uh, unique and special. And sometimes you want to stand out in that way. And, and not feel like you're the odd man out. Yeah. Well, you're a vessel for greatness. Yeah, yeah, that was a true quote from my father. He, yeah. And really, I feel like as a content because he was great, and I'm doing my thing to have a legacy, mm-hmm. and I'm showing them what it's like to have two generations really example, be an example of that. Well, I don't think there's any better motivator than having a purpose with yeah. the intention of passing it down and leaving a legacy. This is legacy right here. Yeah. This is legacy. This is never going to go away. <laughs> you Thank know? you so much. This is a yeah. big deal, you know? Thank you. And I'm really proud to be able to, uh-uh. and I sent a picture because the girls were out of town at the time visiting their family in Bakersfield. And I, I said, well, we made the paper today. And Mia, they all, you know, were on a thread. And she's like, period. Boop. You know, that's their way of dropping the mic, right? In their generation. And that was really cool because, you know, this is somebody who's played softball here, started at Hart Park and has now written her ticket to go to University of Portland in the fall. I'm really proud of her because I can create mine, but then, you know, you've got to do you, and, and they've really done that. And you've also, you know, in a big way, one of the phrases that, you know, you talked about, which I think is one of the most powerful phrases, is sometimes you have to lose to win, mm-hmm. you yes. know? And I think for kids today, it's one of the most yeah. important probably lessons, mm-hmm. and adults as well, mm-hmm. but just that concept for of, sure. like, out of loss can come some of the biggest victories. Oh, my gosh, and I, I really have learned to appreciate those things and really uh, center myself around what that means and what it means to me in the day that you know Richard called me he literally was like you're gonna lose today and I'm like he's like this is all coming from a place of great respect and wanting you to not give up you have somebody that's never met you reach out and say that to you and these are things these are words that my dad would have typically given but he was gone at that point and so I feel these whispers from heaven all the time about keep going don't forget and really when you brought this up it doesn't go away and those are things that my father would constantly say like it's as much as you can work towards the goal and think that you're going to get it and feel like that's going to be the absolute, if that doesn't happen, the best laid plans don't always work out, something will happen. You're connecting the generations, you know, yeah. between your father and your kids. It's like that yeah. that handhold, like the three of us here for holding hands. Yes. It's like, you know, no. boom, it's the, it's the connector. You know yeah. what I mean? That's what it is. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. yeah. It's powerful when you take being that conduit very seriously. And I yeah. think that's what people can appreciate about me is that I do. I never miss a game, miss a play. You know, I have a volleyball player. I have two athletes and an actress. Mm-hmm. So I never miss a play or a play. Triple A. Triple A in your house. Never miss a play or a play. And 
I think that was my signature too as a mother that people could see and that's why I shared it all the time is like wait you're here now you're over here yes because I never missed anything and it was because my father never missed anything even in his passing he never missed anything because he said to me I'll always be there you just have to look for me so certain victories remind me of him being there certain things connect me back to you know wisdom that he gave me and it, it just allows me to know he's there i was really inspired to draw this as you were saying that this idea where when you're going through life here yeah and you have a conflict yeah and then when you hit that conflict there's always some sort of a demise yeah which is actually learning in disguise yeah. and then at that point there's a pivot yeah ultimately to your growth it's so true What's interesting is if you scale this out, it actually looks like this if you zoom out. But if you zoom in, it just looks like this, you yeah. know? The key here is that trajectory. Always moving forward, always and moving up. Always moving upwards. And I yeah. think what's so interesting is that entitlement yeah. doesn't really fit in this. <laughs> Never. <laughs> it doesn't fit no. in it. It makes the whole thing break, in fact. And I say this in my house, like we don't get to have pity parties. We can lose, we can mourn something, we can reflect and we can, right? We'll give it the little bit of time that it needs and it deserves and we honor that and we let it go because you can sink in that. But entitlement has, has that same power. Just allow you to sink in feeling like you don't have to do the work and that my mom positioned me or my dad positioned me in a way that I don't have to consider where I belong in this process. So actually, you belong right in the front. You belong right next to me. And this is why this picture is powerful, because we're, sta oops, we're standing together. This is the day she got a scholarship award uh, as an athlete at Saugus High School. And it is really powerful for me as a mom to see that having started with trying to figure out where they're going to go to school to now she's headed into the world. So we're together with that. And there was never an opportunity for her to have a pity party about, you know, our parents aren't together anymore and da da da. You know, we've had a lot of losses. She was at Saugus during the tragedy. And, and she had to use that, fuel that grief into something and, and honor Gracie, her friend, who she had in a production class. And, and she wore a ribbon in her hair every day when she played softball with Gracie's name on it. Mm -hmm. And they won this year as league champions undefeated, first time in several years that that happened. Well, you know what that is? That's Saga Strong. That's Saga <laughs> Strong, but that's that really that model yeah. that you just yeah. shared, that that trajectory still has to keep moving, going up and going out. And I think if anybody can take and glean anything from that experience is that we're stronger than we realize, and we ultimately, together, can do it. Mm. And that's exactly what that picture means to me. Now you shared a story with me about uh, documenting a certain conflict that one of your daughters went through with her health mm -hmm. when you were in Paris. Yeah. And yeah. your advice to her was to document it. Yeah. Could you take us through that? Yeah. So while I was in Paris just recently with my daughter Madison, I got a phone call one in the morning there, six o'clock here. She's at practice. Mom, something popped in my leg. I'm like, blah, blah. I'm disoriented because it's one in the morning in Paris. <laughs> Uh, I was already heading home, but when I got home, we discovered that she had torn her ACL. And then ultimately, in surgery, found that it was also a torn meniscus. So this is a devastating injury for an elite athlete, right? That's on a trajectory to go any D1 school she wants, you know, pick when you're 17 where you want to go. And it was devastating. It took me a while to be able to even tell her you had to have surgery. But as we're getting through the rehab part and she's starting to just reconsider what her life looks as, as an athlete, I said, use this. You use this to not just inspire, but to recover and to fuel you into being a better athlete. Not just physically, but emotionally. Watch what it looked like when Serena Williams recovered from several injuries. Watch the Kobe story. These, as much as it feels that far away, it's actually your story. But you shape it. You have the opportunity to document your rehab. I've got videos from her right out of surgery, right into rehab, right into post-op appointments. And they might mean anything to her in those moments, but when you put it all together, it's your story. Mm. And everybody loves seeing someone's journey in that way. And I mm. wanted her to be able to use it. It inspired me. Four days after surgery, I wheeled her, I took her to Long Beach Convention Center in a wheelchair to see her team, because she was the captain, yeah. play their last game. Five days after that, I wheeled her onto the field at COC to see her sister graduate. I mean, this is a girl on heavy medication, on a wheelchair, you know, can barely see straight, but she never missed that moment. Mm. 
because it was allowing her to see herself beyond this moment. Yeah. That's so important. Inspiration. Right. Yeah. Well, I wrote in my graphic here, I wrote the word documentation. Yeah. That's what it says right there. Yeah. And what's so interesting is that when you document the conflict and you document the process, all of a sudden an article comes back written about you and you actually didn't get to choose the photograph. They chose it for you yeah. because you did the documentation. Yeah. And that's what that is. That's what you told it's me. It's constant. It's, it's constant. It's constant. Yeah. And when you have that in control of it and how it comes back, mm. which was so important, that the fact that they would use that in such a way and it came back in such a positive way, which is who we are. It wasn't a caricature. It wasn't a version of who they think I am. This is who we are. Mm. Now, I think that the entire halo effect, sometimes when you lose, you win. Yeah. It's all predicated on this idea of being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And for yes. some reason, you have a gift of not worrying about being vulnerable. I mm -hmm. feel it in your essence. Yeah. Were you always this way? Yeah. In Pasadena, yeah. when you were an athlete, when you yeah. were riding horses, yeah. what, were you always this open and comfortable being vulnerable? Yeah. What was Selena 1.0 like? Yeah, I was because it takes a lot of courage to go into being in a rodeo with your horse and thousands of people are watching. And I actually have a great picture of me and my daughter when she was seven coming into an arena with me very vulnerable is like oh my god there's a crowd but by then I was sitting up tall on my horse on my saddle and and can proudly bring my daughter in there's a vulnerability in trying something new there's a vulnerability in starting a business in a Starbucks and not having a concept of where it would take you fast forward a month ago I was in Bordeaux France with my daughter drinking champagne from a client who's headquartered there and you know realizing that it can come full circle but you have to start and when you start you're very vulnerable you don't know if people are gonna call you don't know you only know what you can can control and I can control how hard I work that I'm skilled at what I do and that I have the best intentions of when I do it and that's what connects people to me is that I have nothing but good intentions I have really availed myself to being an expert in what I do and so that it mitigates and minimizes being vulnerable because I can come in as an expert there's some things that you can't help being vulnerable in and that you can just make sure you land on your character and, and what is best in a situation when it emerges but I've always been somebody that's been open to that and I think that's why people it's disarming, but it's very natural. Mm. Well, vulnerability is, I mean, it's one of the key things we talk about a lot because when yeah. people are on video, we want to be vulnerable, be authentic. And yeah. for true connection to happen, if you're going to be vulnerable, you've got to be empathetic and understand empathy. Yeah. And if you're going to be that, you've got to listen. So Absolutely. our big thing is like, and especially for you coming into, you know, a November win Eight. is going to be <laughs> listening yes. and then implementing. So talk a little That's bit right. about that, going from listening to action, yeah. especially for the younger generation. Yeah. And, and when I think about this, I think about people listening to this episode right now, feeling inspired. You know, the <laughs> dopamine levels are high yeah. because they're like, I am so inspired yeah. by Selena. Aww. But now we need to know how we can implement right. it. Sure. So and I, I know a lot of it is your work ethic. <laughs> it is my work ethic, and it is really going back to the values of my dad, and he modeled it. Mm. I mean, I think the biggest thing is that you have to model it. My kids could have accomplished what they accomplished if I wasn't the type to get up every single day and grind. And so modeling it, modeling that it takes time, I think because we have a younger generation that things are instant, that I've shown them the grind. Like, look, we went from Starbucks to here to in Bordeaux, France. And so recognizing that, that you have to capture that in a way that for them, even they can connect in an instant way and feel inspired to, hey, I got to commit to this journey. Morgan had to commit to this rehab. Mia had to commit to her studies to have a, a check written to her from University of Portland. There is no shortcuts. And for me, I share every step so that people can rewind and see the process that it took for me to do what I'm doing so that they can see that it can be done in their version, whatever that looks like. I have many people that have reached out to me to say that I'm going to do some video content now because one, everyone's using that as a way to connect with their, they also don't feel connected when they get, get an email and that's it. There's, it's really flat. And so I think for me, I've learned to use even my bloopers in advertising. They're on my webpage. If you go to Six Years HR, I'm like, here's some bloopers, by the way, because it shows the vulnerability of, of not getting it right and keep trying and do it again. Yep. And, and documenting the process. And document the process. <laughs> it's so important. Yeah. Because people will think when it comes on, it's 30 seconds, that it was there's perfection and that, that it exists. I'm here to tell you. Where's the camera? <laughs> yeah, right here. Right here. It's Selena Cam. <laughs> there's Selena Cam. Look, yeah. the, the hair is messed up on this side. And, you know, but it does doesn't exist in the sense that in real life when you need someone to be in leadership on your behalf that they accept that and that they'll work towards making sure
sure that someone is there for them at that seat. I was a social worker before I went into HR. So it speaks to every profession I've had has always been to serve others. It's always been to help people. You know what's amazing? With all the things you've done in your life in terms of just the diversified areas you've been in, that's exactly the kind of person that you want in office Mm -hmm. that can Mm -hmm. speak to so many different kinds of people from so many different backgrounds with so many different experiences. Experiences, So that's going to be inspirational for everybody. For me, too, I'm a constituent first, and so I would look for that. I would look for someone that just isn't kind of framed by, let me be clear, I'm an independent, I'm a no-party preference in a nonpartisan seat. I'm the only person in this race so far that is nonpartisan in that way. And that speaks to the fact that I don't align with the politics more than I make sure it's about the people in my leadership. And if you sent your paperwork in right now to get into this race, you cannot put a political affiliation because it's a nonpartisan seat. You have to work in a bipartisan way. So when people hear that about me, like, what sets you apart? I'm the only only independent in the race. I'm like, that means I work for you. And I'm clear about that even in my affiliation. Mm. It's amazing. Amazing. So, uh, so many takeaways here. So inspirational, you know, how to open up, how to take conflict, how to be vulnerable, how to document the process, not and be, use it. <laughs> and use it to your advantage. Yeah. That's what Dr. Eugene Thomas taught us, yeah. which is to take what you have and use it to your advantage, you know? Yeah. And so a lot of people don't know, before he went into education, he was an air traffic controller. Mm. They all went on strike yeah. in 1980. He lost his job in a matter of 72 hours. And he's like, well, we got to move to California. I'm like, what, huh? We lived in New York, mm. and that was devastating for me at 10 years old to have to leave where I thought I was going to live for the rest of my life to come to California and start all over. But if you look at my life now, I had to leave Bakersfield and come here and start all over, and I had to ask my kids to do that in tow. And I had already lived it and knew what it looked like, and so I didn't have a problem. You had right? to lose that geographically yes. to win geographically somewhere Exactly, else. and my father had shown me what that looked like when I was 10 years old. Mm. And so it, I wasn't fearful, it was just like, now what does it look like for me? And at that time, he was very clear to me, he goes, You've seen this before. And I was like, oh, what? No. You know, that's when I was like, Dad, I think we're going to get a divorce. He's like, well, you know what it looks like. There's no mystery here. Yeah. But you will find out what it looks like for you. Mm. And that's when I just let the rest fall away and found my place, found what it looked like. And really, when he became an educator, he changed the industry. He became an educator that was innovative. So when he evolved and, and reinvented himself, and by the end of his life, he said, if you reinvent yourself two and three times in your life, you've lived a good life. You've lived a full, rich life. Mm-hmm. We, we talked to you, like, you've done a lot of things. You're a rodeo girl. You did. Yeah, because you live a rich life when you are open and vulnerable enough to change. Whether it's deliberate change or one that we can't control, like mm-hmm. COVID, change is going to happen. Well, this is what you talk about, where actions take control of the narrative. People right. see how you deal with conflict. Isn't that what life is yeah. about? They say 80% of life is how you deal with it is. things that happen. And here you are dealing. Morgan, you're rehabbing yeah. you know, from a devastating industry I- injury, but you can do it. Yeah. And here's some roadmaps to what that looks like. You know, this isn't without, it's like evidence-based, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we use in social work. It's evidence-based in order to make a decision. It's no different in life. It's evidence-based. It's there for you. You, you just have to decide if you're going to use it and yeah. draw from it. Even if it's not your story, you can still draw from someone's story. Mm. Well, I think that vulnerability is power because you can actually turn it into your future. Yeah. You know? And, I found uh, a purpose in that change. Yeah. I found a purpose in when COVID happened. Yeah. I had to get every day, and I'm not a video person. You guys are the experts in that. <laughs> but I had to figure out how to do a daily video because yeah. I couldn't be in person with people. Yeah. And that's where the bloopers came. And that's where, mm-hmm. but I knew I needed to do something. And then from that, the purpose came. And that's where my clients were like, could you please run for city council? We need a business voice. We need somebody that is trusted. We need somebody that's committed to helping. And I was like, well, no, you know, and he's like, no, really, you, you should run. We've had common sense and your whole life and you've known how to pivot for every situation that there is in the best possible way to not only, you know, better yourself and your family, but also realize the temperature of the room and understand, you know, what needs to happen. And help the people around you. I mean, that's really what this community is about. We're we're in a really giving community, which is why we could flourish if we're that type of person. And that's what happened in my life is that I found a purpose in the things that I had experienced being able to be used in a city council seat to serve the entire community, not just my family. Like you can see in the picture, like they're taller than me now. They're getting into the world. So timing wise for the community is equal to their timing in life. Like I've job well done. I can 
trust that they don't take what I've given them and use it like I use my dad's information yeah. and do what they do great things do what they need to do so with that you know my daughter's like you need to get a vision for yourself mom because you know I'm leaving <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. going to Portland and I'm like I'll work on that Mia thank you yeah yeah, yeah. but that's really what she said to me her wow. the beginning of her senior year she's like you should probably set a vision for yourself and like get out there and execute and like if there's anyone that can do yes. it <laughs> so that was really cool that yeah. she said that and that she could play it back to me if you will because yeah. that's what I told her to do yeah so then you know you become your parents and when you're repeating it back. <laughs> the oh student, my God. The student has, has become, become the, the teacher. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Exactly. Right. So yeah, my yeah. kids will do that to me in a heartbeat. And that means you did your job. Yes, yep. it does. Yeah. Well, to cap it out here, I think that we should all take a moment to actually thank the conflict and thank the people Appreciate that it. gave us hardship in our lives because without them, we wouldn't be who we are. Yeah, yeah. not even in a bitter way, in, in a humble way in a gracious way I remember when the last cycle happened it was like you know you should be a gracious loser and a humble winner mm. right mm -hmm. and so I was gracious in my appreciation for what at that time was very traumatic but it really has shaped me today and it actually shaped our daughters and mm. so there's still great affection and respect that I have and he can appreciate what I've done with our daughters and, and you know he couldn't have known that landing them here and then sowing those seeds would have done this but he was a very proud dad at the graduation and could see that making that move was the best thing that could have happened for our family even if he was no longer included in, in the same way that we had set out he can appreciate that that was that this was the best thing for our family mm -hmm. and the best thing plans don't always work out but you did a good job mm -hmm. and I appreciate that he can see me that way mm -hmm. and, you know like me I didn't get bitter I just got better I didn't get bitter, I just got better. That's a campaign phrase right there. <laughs> Don't get bitter, get better. Don't That's get bitter, it. get better. And vote. That's right. <laughs> November 8th. Where's the camera? Wait, Selena the Cam. Selena Cam up there. Selena Cam. All right, so where are we going November 8th? November 8th. To the polls. To the polls. Yeah. And uh, give us your website address, yes. your social handles. We want LinkedIn. We want TikTok, yeah. Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. So I remember I talked about, this guy taught me that if you Google Selena and the city, it comes up. The content Perfect. comes up. So I don't want to be dismissive of the need to have the information. But Selena Thomas, if you Google me, you'll see my campaign website. You'll see the business website. You'll see the op-eds. You'll see the Signal HR guru. But also there's a link tree that you use as content that like to research me I suggest people go there because it really shares the journey from beginning to where it is now and I'm constantly updating it this will be on there actually Absolutely. the constant content is so important yeah besides anyone that has followed the journey anyone picking up you know and just meeting me I met a lot of people at Hollywood Bowl this weekend and I was constantly like yeah. oh, if you don't live in Santa Cruz but this map. <laughs> you know I was always because I had someone say I know 20 people there hold on and they sent the card yeah. I mean, that was really cool. Yeah. So I make sure that I'm constantly, no matter where I'm at speaking, I was speaking about it in France. I'm like, I'm running for city council in my country. And the guy's like, well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but, you know, it was really important for me to constantly communicate about that and share my beliefs and share my passion for yeah. the, this opportunity. It, is, it would be and will be historic. I'll be the first African-American city council for our community. And I think with the diversity and the evolution that we've had and, you know, even the time that I've been here, it, it's also time to see someone that's reflective of what lives here sure. also and, and I think what I embody not just that one metric speaks volumes and it's time to see that at the city council level also well I know where I'm going to be on November 8th S. Thomas not yes. Selena Thomas S. Thomas S. Thomas, S. Yeah. Thomas. <laughs> just look for Thomas it's going to be really important to see what comes out in the next couple weeks actually because the, the candidate application process will close currently there's three incumbents I have respect for the leadership here why I moved here is because of what they have done their mm -hmm. legacy is why I'm running and I said that to our mayor Lorraine West just last week at a dinner was that you inspired me to run even if people could see us as opponents I see them as counterparts because eventually hopefully one day I'll work with you alongside you there's three seats there's three incumbents and the field is currently three running with the three incumbents so six so this is all to help you make an informed decision you know and it's time to check that box or bubble it in mail-in ballot whatever version you're voting in because there are still mail-in ballots in this you want to make sure that you participate very very important local elections affect you first 
Yes. That say it again. Say it one more local, time to Selena Cam. Local elections affect you first and in your life, in your daily life. It's so yeah. so important. Those nuances that are specific to your city happen at city council. Mm. And if you don't get a sticker, we will send you one. Just put yes. a comment below this video. Yes. And, we'll and I have a Selena Thomas, I voted Selena Thomas sticker too. There it is. So <laughs> very proud of that. So I so appreciate you guys allowing yeah. me the opportunity to yeah. share my story and follow the journey. It's always a pleasure to see you guys in the hallway. And we were like, we got to do this. Let's just oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been I've been working on this for months. Yeah, so, so I appreciate that yeah. so much. Yeah. And then, you know, follow the journey because I think we're all going to have something to celebrate on November 8th. And mm -hmm. it really is just that someone of the community has come forward to serve in the community and I think people can appreciate that. Mm. And we'll have to do is we'll have to show up at your office with the crew. Yes. I'm gonna shoot it from Some there. Vulnerability yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's so yes. awesome. Well no, thank, thank you for coming you. on the show. Absolutely. And it's been amazing thank to you. have you and yes. this is part of the Rev Show interview series and we're just so happy that you could do it. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. Boom. High five. <laughs> Thanks Selena. Yeah, appreciate you. Everybody, Just, if you like the video, Ruben, what yeah, do you do? Consider liking, leaving a comment, sharing this with someone that would be inspired by yeah. Selena. Thank Aww. you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Bye everybody. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Connection Loop Podcast. And in this episode, we are testing our cameras, but this thing is not working.